Hope City Church, how you doing this morning? Y'all sound great. You look great. You look great this morning. Um, I love that Hope story. I love Bob. He's awesome. Um, so this weekend is 4th of July weekend, right? How many of you celebrated 4th of July weekend this weekend? Anybody? Oh yeah, shooting off fireworks. Um, how many of you are celebrating 4th of July next weekend? Anybody? Okay. Not much. We have some. You know, what I've learned since living in Bullitt County is that 4th of July weekend is the entire month of June. (laughs) Yeah. And if I were to guess, I would say that the whole month of July is going to be 4th of July weekend as well. (laughs) There has been fireworks every single night in my neighborhood. I don't even have to see a fireworks show. I just sit on the front lawn. It's awesome. (laughs) It's insane. But my name is, is Pastor Jono. I'm the campus pastor for our Shepherdsville location. Shepherdsville, come on. And I'm super excited to get to have this conversation with you guys today. Just for those of you who don't know anything about me, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Megan. She's amazing. Yeah, come on, give it up for Megan. She's amazing. Yeah. And we have way too many kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have three kids. We have three kids. My daughter, she is going to be five on the 24th of this month, and uh, she's amazing. Her name is Lakin. And then we have two identical twin boys, and you may have met them already. They have a tendency just to run up to people and punch them. And (laughs) we're working through that. If you've met them that way, I'm sorry. I apologize. We're working through that, so pray for us. (laughs) We just moved here from Texas. And I call myself a Texan, right? Hook them horns, come on. I call myself a Texan, but if I'm being totally honest, I really grew up in Michigan. Yeah, I really grew up in Michigan. And one of my favorite things about Michigan was all of the lakes. We got any lake people in here? Come on. You like going to the lake? Yeah, I loved going to the lake as a kid. My family, we grew up on the lake in Michigan. We loved being on the water. And we had two different kinds of boats when I was growing up. Okay, my family, we had two different kinds of boats. The first boat was what we called our speedboat. Now, this boat, we would uh, would tube and we would ski behind. And I knew that if we were going to be on this this speedboat, that there was going to be some kind of danger in my immediate future. Okay? (laughs) Because my mom would hardly ever get on this boat which left me, my brother, my dad, and my grandpa. And that is a horrible combination of human beings, okay, in one boat together. And I'll never forget, one day my dad, he had bought this new tube, and it was for two people, so it was bigger. And uh, me being the selfish 12-year-old that I was, I decided I'm getting on this tube by myself. And he's pulling me through Lake Michigan, and some wind catches underneath the tube, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm starting to catch air, right? I'm starting to catch air. And then I start parasailing through the air behind this boat. I'm screaming. I'm crying. I'm like, Dad, stop. And him being the great father figure that he was, he wasn't paying attention at all, right? And then finally, I go crashing back down to the water, swallow like five gallons of water in half a second. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. Decided I wasn't tubing anymore that weekend, right? Does anybody have any dads that are like that? They didn't pay attention when they pulled you on the tube. It's like their goal was to destroy you. Uh, (laughs) And then we had a second boat. And this boat, this boat stayed in a slip all year or all summer long. And this boat, I knew when we got on it, it was going to be a nice, easy experience. It was going to be a nice experience. Um, We would ride it from Muskegon to Grand Haven. And then we would get ice cream, we would picnic, we would come back home, or we'd go back to our slip, watch the fireworks. Every Friday night they had fireworks there. We'd sleep in it, wake up the next morning, and it was just going to be a nice, easy experience. There's something about a mom being on a boat that makes your dad not act crazy. Come on, right? Yeah, there's something about a mom that makes your dad not act crazy. And this story is the perfect setup to what we're going to be talking about today. Because I started to notice a pattern about who was in the boat. And for some reason, whoever was in the boat mattered. 
whoever was in the boat mattered. If it was my dad and my grandpa, we knew that certain death was near, okay? <laughs> but if it was my mom, we knew that we would be safe. And what I've learned is that so much of how I feel is based on who I'm around, and, and so this morning, I wanted to talk with you guys about the thought, who is in your boat? Who is in your boat? And when I say who is in your boat, what I'm saying is who is in your life? Who is in your life? Who are you in a relationship with? Who do you let speak into your life? What friends do you have? Because the quality of the people in your life determine the quality of your life. Okay? The quality of the people in your life determine the quality of your life. And whoever is in your boat will determine the quality of your life. Whoever is in your boat will determine if you make it or if you don't. If it works or if it fails. Whoever is in your boat will determine if it's rocky or if it's smooth. Whoever is in your boat has more of an influence on your life than what you think. And so this morning, we're going to look at three stories in the Bible that involve boats. Three stories in the Bible. Y'all know that there's boats all through the Bible? It's pretty cool. Jesus loved boats, y'all. <laughs> Go to the lake. <laughs> so we're going to look at three stories that involve boats, three stories where people are out on the water, three stories where people are trying to get from point A to point B using A, boat, yeah, and how the people that were in the boat either helped them or hurt them. So I'm asking you today to really think this through and self-evaluate because one person in your boat can change everything about your journey. One person can change everything. And the reality is when I say that, I totally mean it, is that you are on a journey. Every single one of you are on a journey, and God has an incredible plan for your life. God didn't create you in this moment, in this moment in history just to exist. God created you for a plan and for a purpose, and he has a final destination for your life. And just like the three stories we're going to look at today, all the characters had a plan. God has a plan for your life. So the first story we're going to look at today is in the book of Jonah. It's a story of Jonah. And we're going to start in Jonah chapter 1. It says, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Okay, so Jonah, he gets this message from God and it's not an easy message, right? Imagine I tell you to go up to somebody and say, hey, you're wicked, like, I probably wouldn't do that. If someone came to me and said, hey, tell this person that you're a wicked person, like, eh, I'm not going to do that, right? And so Jonah does what 90% of what we do when we know we have something hard to do. It says, Jonah got up and went the opposite direction. <laughs> Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Anybody ever been there before? He got up and he went the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went aboard, hoping to escape from the Lord sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep, down in the hold. I love the story. So Jonah, he gets on a boat and he is literally running the opposite direction that God told him to go to. God said go east, he goes west. He goes left instead of right. He, he's running the opposite direction and then while he's running they start to experience a storm. But the thing about the storm is that it wasn't anything that the sailors had done. Okay, the storm that the sailors were experiencing wasn't because of anything that they had done. It was because of what Jonah did. God sent the wind because of Jonah's disobedience, not because of the sailors' disobedience. Which leads me to believe that maybe some of you are experiencing storms in your life right now, and it's not even because of what you've done. 
It's because of who you're connected to. There's, there, maybe there, there's, there's someone in your boat that's bringing all the storms in your life. Could it be that some of your frustration and some of your depression isn't even because of you? Some of your anxiety isn't even because of you, but because of the people in your life that you're letting influence your life. Some of the conflict in your marriage isn't even because of you and the other person. It's because of the outside voices that you're letting influence your marriage. Some of your financial problems aren't even because of your money it's because, uh, or what you're doing with your money. It's because of you're letting other people tell you what to do with your money. Oh, buy that car. You deserve that car. You deserve that car. And before you know it, you're broke, <laughs> right? Your journey would have been better without them. There wouldn't have been any wind. There wouldn't have been any storm or any loss of cargo. And the whole time that this is going on, did you notice what Jonah was doing? The storm that he caused, he's sleeping through. <laughs> and have you ever noticed that the people in your world that bring all the problems, when those problems start to come, they're not even phased by it. They're not even phased by it. They're telling you to get a divorce. You're te they're telling you that your husband is horrible, and you're staying up all night trying to figure out, do I get a divorce? Do I not get a divorce? And what are they doing? They're sleeping. You're the one trying to figure out, how do I pay my bills? Because they talked me into buying this car that I can't afford. I've got a mortgage that i got to pay. i got to get school clothes for my kids. You're, you're staying up all night stressing. And what are they doing? They're sleeping. And if you have people in your life that are running from God's voice, they'll always bring the wind with them. Some of you are experiencing things that may not even because of may not even be because of what you've done, but it's because of who's in your boat. It's funny you probably wouldn't get high anymore if they weren't in your boat. Yeah, it, it, it's funny it, you, when you don't have anybody that talks about people in your life anymore. You just stop talking about people. And in the story of Jonah, they, they tried to figure out the storms on their own. The story goes on, and they tried. Jonah said, listen, you got to throw me overboard. And they did what we do as people. They say, oh, we're just going to keep rowing through this storm. Well, I can change them. I can change that relationship. I can change them. And it wasn't until that they realized in order to move on, they had to get Jonah out of their boat. They prayed to God, and they said, don't let his blood be on my hand. And they threw him overboard. So my question is, do you have Jonah's in your life? Because the quality of the people in your life determine the quality of your life. We see in the story of Jonah that the wrong person can sink you, but now we're going to talk about this guy named Paul, okay? We're going to go to Acts chapter 27, and this guy Paul, he's an incredible guy. He had this crazy transformation in his life. He went from being Saul to being Paul. He went from killing Christians to being the leader of the Christians. He wrote uh, two-thirds of what we call the New Testament now. He had a, a crazy transformation. And we're going we're gonna to pick up in Acts chapter 27. Right now they're transferring Paul from one spot of land to another, point A to point B, using a, a boat, right, using a boat. Love boats. And everything's going crazy. The weather's starting to go crazy. It's starting to go haywire. And in verse 9, it says, And Paul spoke up to the ship's officers about it. He said, Men, I believe that there's trouble ahead if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger in our lives as well. But the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and to the owner than to Paul. And aren't you glad that God will send you someone that makes the right decisions to talk some sense into you when you don't know what to do? Wow. Yeah. You need people in your life that have been through some things. Yeah. We all need Pauls in our life that have been through some things, that, that have been further than you, that can tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. That's why I'm kind of an old soul. I like to hang out with older people because they're so much wiser than me. And they, they can speak to me. I can learn from them. I love hanging out with older people. 
And Paul, Paul, what he's saying is, hey, I've done this before, and it's going to be bad. I've done this before. It's going to be a disaster, guys. It's going to be a disaster. If you keep dating him, it's going to be a disaster. If you keep spending money that you don't have, there's going to be a great loss. If you keep talking about people behind their backs, there's going to be a disaster. And what I love is that Paul, he doesn't know what's going to happen, but he's just trying to give some good advice and some good wisdom. And you need people in your life, and we need people in our lives that are just going to give us some good advice and some good wisdom. So the story goes on, and we find that instead of listening just like Jonah, they, they do the opposite. That we find that they continue their journey, and all of a sudden they hit a storm. The winds come, and the waves come, and they start throwing things overboard just like in Jonah's story. But this time, it, they were scared because on this boat, they had prisoners, and Paul was one of the prisoners, and they were afraid that the prisoners would escape when they get on land. And so they come up with the conclusion, we're going to kill all the prisoners, all right? Paul, being one of the prisoners, he speaks up, okay? <laughs> I would encourage you, if someone's going to throw you overboard <laughs> to kill you, <laughs> speak up, okay? <laughs> speak up. However, do not say what Paul said. Okay, Paul says in verse 21, Paul gathered the crew together and he says, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place. Okay, if someone is going to kill you, do not say that. Okay, do not say you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You, should, you, you would have avoided all of this damage and loss. And I wonder if there is damage and loss in our lives that could have been avoided if we would have just listened to the right voice. If we would have just listened to the voice of wisdom, if we would have just listened to the voice of God, if we would have just listened, we would have avoided. We could have avoided that heartache had we have just listened to the voice of wisdom. We could have, we could have avoided those wasted years if we had just listened to wisdom, we could have avoided that loneliness, that depression. We could have avoided that, that anxiety and that divorce and that addiction had we have just listened to the voice of wisdom. And you have to get the right people in your boat. Here's what I love about God. Even though these sailors, they experience pain and they experience damage, the next verse, 22, it says, but take courage. But take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. For last night, an angel of the God to whom I serve and I belong stood beside me and said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you, so take courage. For I believe God, and it will be just as he said. I love that. In the first story, it's the, the boat is going down because of one man. But in the second story, it's saved because of one man. The people are saved because of one man. Jonah says, I don't want to do what God said. And Paul says, I trust and believe what God says. Listen, some people in your life, they cause storms. And then there's some people in your lives that calm storms. And you have to make sure you know who is in your boat because the quality of the people in your life determine the quality of your life. Maybe your whole dream in life was to, was to go to college and get a degree and you let someone talk you out of it and now you're living in regret because you didn't get that degree. You can have an amazing dream but with the wrong person in your boat, you can miss out on it. We can have the right spouse, but with the wrong person in our boat, we'll miss out on them. We can have the, a, a good family. We can have an amazing family, but with the wrong person in our boat, we'll miss out on them. And with the wrong person, you'll miss it and you'll lose it. And with the right person, even though you'll experience storms and hard times, 
you'll still get there. Spoiler alert. Everyone on the ship that Paul was on lived. They get there. These two stories, they show us two different points, and the first one is some of your problems are being caused by who's in your boat. Some of our problems are being caused by who's in our boat. Not all of them, but some of them. Some of the tension in our relationships is because of who is in our boat. The reason why we can't change our situation that we're struggling with The reason why we still go down and not up is because of who is in our boat. Has anybody ever watched Deadliest Catch? Oh, yeah. I'm going to do that one day, y'all. I'm going to do it. (laughs) They go out on these boats, and they catch a bunch of crab. And uh, there's a thing called crab mentality. When they try to dump them out of the cages, they grab onto each other. And it's almost to say, if I can't get out, you can't get out. And yet we have to be careful that those aren't the type of people we have in our lives. People that say, I don't want you to get out of your depression because I can't get out of mine. I don't want you to actually have a good marriage because mine's not too great right now. I don't want you to be financially free because I'm still bound. I don't want you to get close to Jesus because I'm far away. And listen, I'm not saying that, that people are intentionally trying to sabotage your life, okay? But what I'm saying is you have to be careful because some people, even unintentionally, will drag you down. You know those people you talk to on the phone and you feel worse after you get off the phone with them than you did before? I've learned that there's three-minute people in my life and three-hour people in my life. Don't spend three hours with a three-minute person. You have to figure it out. Do you have people that that say, come on, go higher, go higher? Or do you have people that are saying, come back down? Because even with with the wrong person, even though you have great intentions, you'll never get out. And sometimes it's a family member. It's true. Sometimes it's your mama. Sometimes it's a best friend. Sometimes it's a sibling. Sometimes it's the person you're sitting next to right now. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Got awkward, don't look. (laughs) But what I'm saying is that your destiny is too great to let who's in your boat keep you from getting there. So some of your problems are being caused by who's in your boat. And number two, some of your problems are being fixed by who's in your boat. Your life is better because of them. Your marriage is improving not because of you, but because of them. You have a better concept of your self-worth because they tell you. Yeah. You, You believe that you can do it because they tell you you can do it. With the with the right people, you may lose some things, but you won't lose your life. The wrong people will have you, they'll have you holding on to relationships and keeping friends and With the right group, maybe you'll lose some friends, but you won't lose your life. And the hardest part of this analogy of who's in your boat is you feel like if you lose them, you'll lose your life. Well, if I get them out of my boat, I'm not going to have any fun anymore. If I get them out of my boat, I'm not going to feel any validation. If I get them out of my boat, I'm not going to have those memories. And so you hold on to them, but really, you you feel like if I lose them, I'm going to lose my life. And the problem is, and that you don't realize, is you're already losing your life by holding on to them. And when you let them go, you can actually find life. Sometimes God sends a storm, sometimes God sends a person. In my life, God sent a person to me. I grew up a pastor's kid, and I was in church my entire life, never missed a day. Any pastor's kids? No? Okay, yeah, here we go. So I grew up a pastor's kid, never missed a day in church, and, but I truly decided to follow Christ at the age of 17. It was the summer after I graduated high school, and I realized that there were some people that couldn't come with me. Some of those people, they were my best friends. 
They were girlfriends. And I realized that they were the wind in my world. And I thought, man, if I, if, if I let them go, I'm a terrible friend. But I knew that I was never going to get to where I'm supposed to go with them in my boat. So early on, there were a lot of lonely times in my life, which isn't normal for me. Chances are, if I have to make a Walmart run and you're next to me, 100%, I'm going to say, get in the car and come with me to Walmart. <laughs> I hate to be alone. And I moved to Florida. I'm not telling you to move across the United States. I went to college. Okay. I moved to Florida, and I got away from the best friends, and I got away from the girlfriends, and while I was there, my phone would be getting blown up. And I'd find myself going right back to the old me. They'd say, hey, Jono, I miss you. Oh, I miss you too, man. Hey, send me that picture. And I'd be doing these things that I knew was wrong, and I had to get them out of my boat. So I'll never forget, I gave my phone to my new friend that God had sent me, Josh. And I said, man, you got to keep my phone. Just take my phone and keep it. And he hid it in his room for two weeks. And when I got it back, there were tons of text messages and missed phone calls that all said, hey, Jono, where you at? Yo, Jono, where you at? Jono, come back home. Jono, I miss you. Hey, babe, come home. And I'll never forget, I called my parents when I got the phone back. I called my parents back in Texas, and I was crying. I said, Dad, you have to change my phone number. Change my phone number now, Dad. Please change my phone number. I have to get them out of my boat. I have to. And I thought I was losing my life because I was so lonely. But what I found out is when I got rid of the wrong people, God started sending me the right people. And when I let go of friends, God didn't send me friends that told me what I wanted to hear. They told me what I needed to hear. And when those people got in my life, things in my life started to get fixed. And there are some of you, you're in this conflict saying that if I give that up, I'll miss out on life. But what I'm telling you is whatever that is, it's already making you miss out and you don't even realize it. The moment you give that up, God can and will give you real hope and he'll give you real life. And when that happens, you'll be able to recognize and see the people that God wants to send you. He'll send you the right boyfriend. You'll be able to recognize them. He'll send you the right spouse and you'll be able to recognize them. He'll send you the right coworker, the right idea when you get the wrong out and get the right in. Yeah, you're going to lose some stuff, but you won't lose your life. So who's in your boat? Are they running from God or are they trusting in God? Because the quality of the people in your life determine the quality of your life. There's some people you need to cling to and some you need to let go of. So we talked about Paul, and we talked about Jonah, but there's no better example of how the right person can save you like Jesus can. Did you know that Jesus was in a boat quite often in the Bible? <laughs> Jesus spent a lot of time in a boat. Get a boat, go to the lake. <laughs> and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 8, and there's a story about Jesus and his disciples, and Jesus tells the disciples, hey guys, Let's get in this boat and let's cross to the other side of the sea. And in just like the other two stories, the wind and the storms come and they go down to get Jesus because Jesus is sleeping, not because he's running from God, but because he's at peace with God. And he's sleeping and they go down to get him. And the Bible says they shake him and they wake him up and they say, Jesus, what are you doing? You're down here sleeping and we're all going to die. And Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith. And he speaks, to the, he speaks to the storm and he says, wind be still and waves be silent. And right then the wind and the waves obeyed his voice. What I'm trying to say is this, is Jesus in your boat? Is Jesus in your life? Because with Jesus in your boat, even though there's wind and even though there's waves, he can calm all of that. Because there's some stuff that happens, it's not about who's in your boat, it's just life. 
Sometimes life just happens. And Jesus can calm it. My God is big enough and God is strong enough to calm the winds and the waves in your life. He can calm the doctor's report. He can calm the situation in your family. You know your kids are going crazy, but Jesus can speak to that and he can calm it. He can speak to the situation in your job. He can speak to the situation about your friends. He can calm the haters and the backbiters. He can calm the people who are trying to pull you back down. Jesus has a way of calming the wind and calming the waves, but it will only happen if he's in your boat. So who's in your boat? Bow your heads, let's pray.